The great folks over at Water Lily sent me a turbine to test. Adam Press, who is the director of mechanical design and production for Water Lily, believes that I may be the right person to show off this little turbine. It comes in two forms, a 12 volt version and a USB version. Now the 12 volt version is actually higher than 12 volts, it's 14.4 volts, which is the volts that are required to charge a normal 12 volt lead acid or AGM or even many lithium batteries. And yes, that does mean it will work with many power stations or solar generators as they may be called. It's meant to be used in deep, fast flowing water. Now you can see in the video here that the water is not quite deep enough to fit a six inch turbine. So I'm making it deeper by narrowing the channel, which will also increase the water velocity. So it's a six inch turbine, but the housing is seven inches in diameter and it's three inches thick and it's just under three pounds. If you can get the water flowing through it over seven miles per hour, then you will get a full 15 watts of charging capabilities. So you need a very fast river, or you can even tow it behind a sailboat for faster velocities, but it'll work even at slower velocities down to one mile per hour in slower moving rivers or tow behind kayaks or canoes. And unlike the sun or wind, water will typically in these situations flow 24-7, so you have a reliable, constant supply of power. Shortly after this video comes out, they're going to have a wind turbine accessory to add on to this also. And they do currently offer a hand crank if you're in a, a really bad situation where you just need to charge up a cell phone or some other device for emergency communications. You can even parallel multiple devices for higher wattage output. The base water lily comes with 12 feet, that's three and a half meters of paracord for anchoring it to solid structures that ideally won't flow away. And it also comes with a stainless steel carabiner, a rope tensioner, and the stainless steel lanyard. Of course, I've had a few technical questions that I had to ask them, just for clarity of video sake. And of course, they were wonderful in helping me out because they're Canadian. Fun fact, this turbine is in fact made in Canada. The company is based out of Newfoundland, so that would explain why they focus more on wind and water power instead of anything dealing with sun. I was trying to focus the turbine in the highest velocity chunk of water. It may have even worked better a little bit further downstream where the water was deeper. That's charging. So what do we got for volts? 14 volts. Okay, that's good. Can you switch it to amps? All right, what's our amps? 0.26. Okay, so it's definitely working there. 0 0.26 2. times, what was it, 14? 14. All right, want you can be in there if you want. I don't care. I'll, so, go you're gonna go around the corner? Okay. I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, where is it? There it is down there. So I got the water lily in the stream. It's clearly outputting power to a power station. And it's about 3.6 watts. And that's a function of the water speed. So we did what we could to get the water speed up here. And maybe do a little bit more to get it higher. So you can get more amps out of it and more watts. So that's putting 14 volts into that at, what, 0.26 amps? So that's 3.6 watts approximately. And so that would definitely charge it up. It would take a while, but this stream will run continuously, 24 seven. So as a trickle charger for a power station or a battery bank or a cell phone, it would work fantastic. Um, if, for example, you took this out 
like on your side by side here and you killed the battery somehow left the lights on and you had that with you then you could charge the battery it'd take a little bit of time but you could charge it enough to start the ATV or side by side or whatever you have if you're going out Jeep camping it might even work to charge a Jeep battery these boots I'm wearing are not waterproof my feet are soaked Looks like we might have a leaf stuck in there. Let's not fall in. Yep, see there's a leaf there. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, just be wary of slippery rocks when doing this sort of thing. I'm a little bit more wet. My arm is wet there too. But I didn't get the electronics wet. I didn't get my phone wet, so that's good. Oh, my feet are freezing. A few hours later, it's still charging. You see it flashing there. So it is working, it's just a little bit slow. And that's uh, due to something called the Betz limit, and uh, the power density increases at the cube of velocity with water. So, if you increase the low up water speed a little bit, you get a lot more power out of it. Unfortunately, it's about as fast as we're going to get around here. Also, notice I have changed because those other boots were not waterproof. You want to go back to the house? Is it cold out? All right, well, very cool little turbine. Uh, it does have some leaf buildup, so you want to use it in a clear stream, of course. We were trying this yesterday, and the water was rising, so it was picking up a lot of leaves and pushing them into the turbine. All right, we're trying to get some uh, power readings off of it. And when I first put it in, I noticed there was like a, a leaf caught on the back of it, so I wonder if there's any leaves caught in it. Uh, yes, there are quite a few leaves caught in it. So the problem here is we're having a, a really decent snow melt, and so the high flow is creating a lot of debris in the creek. But here it ran for a few hours without getting clogged, and even the few leaves that were in there were not affecting production, it was still putting out power. So you definitely do want to use this in a situation where there's a lot more velocity. Like even if we put the turbine right there where it's got a really decent amount of velocity, probably, oh, six miles an hour, I would say. Hey, yeah, I would say six miles an hour. Uh, but really you need a little bit, little bit more velocity and a thick stream of water for it to put out maximum power. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna do a few more videos on this, trying to increase the power output. Um, maybe not necessarily in a creek, or maybe not in this creek, it'd have to be a different creek, or maybe a, a significant river that's nearby me. So we'll have some more videos on this. So that, that's not all. I'm going to try hooking it up to my lathe so I can get different voltage outputs at different RPMs. I'll be able to hook a fish scale to it to get the torque required at a specific RPM to output certain powers so we can get an efficiency of the turbine as a whole as well. I'm gonna hook my leaf blower up to it to see if that really affects it because uh, it should be able to work in wind too. What? You got a basket? Brandon, yeah. come here. You're not helping the video, you know. Always fun filming with family around. And maybe a few other things with this as a generator because it's got a, a really low you know, turning resistance. There's a bit of a breeze here. I wonder if it's going to spin. Yeah, it kind of was spinning in the breeze there. So, 
like, comment, subscribe, and uh, check them out. I have Amazon links down below. I have links to their website down below. They did sponsor this video, and by that I mean they sent me this to test out, and that's all there is to it. And I didn't pay for it, just so you know. Just trying to be clear here. So this is a very cool little device. Again, it's kind of heavy for backpacking or hiking, but if you have any sort of vehicle that you're going along with, or maybe uh, in an SHTF situation, this would be a handy thing to have around. See you guys around. Bye.